saw a post that was going around Facebook around the middle of last week and it said, I don't know who needs to hear this, but today is Wednesday. For those of us who are spending all our time at home right now, and I know that that's not all of us because some of you are essential employees still going out and about to work. But for those of us who are maybe only changing out of our pajamas on a good day, at least, time does seem to blur together more than usual um, these days. And that's one of the things that makes me glad that we're now entering Holy Week, which is a specific week, which with, with specific days, with specific meaning. Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday. It's a week that grounds us in God's story, in God's time, even when we may not feel especially grounded in our own. And that said, Holy Week can feel like a bit of a time warp itself. We start on Sunday with the crowds chanting Hosanna as Jesus rides into Jerusalem. Five days later, we're at the cross. Two days later, there's an empty tomb. And in the meantime, Jesus finds himself in the Garden of Gethsemane after dinner has been eaten, after feet have been washed, praying as he prepares to face what he knows is ahead. Jesus' ministry began in temptation as he contended with the devil in the wilderness right after his baptism. And we might, might imagine that things have come full circle now as Jesus has to decide for the last time whether he's really going to go through with all of it. Maybe as he prayed that famous prayer, if it's possible, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. He remembered how he taught his disciples to pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. A few weeks ago, I got an email from someone who looked ahead a little bit in this series and asked how it is we can pray for God not to lead us into temptation. Is it really God who leads us into temptation? After all, in the letter of James, we read, when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me. It's a good question that I'm not sure that I have a great answer for, especially since I'm inclined to agree with James there. The world presents us with temptation. God leads us in right paths around and through it. Some other translations of the Bible take on the theological challenge here by rendering these words, keep us from being tempted. That's what we read a moment ago in the common English version or the contemporary English version or uh, don't let us yield to temptation from the New Living Translation. Those translations take a bit more free license with the Greek as far as I can tell, but I do think that they can help us think about the meaning of the line. In the end, the truth is that we are going to face temptation one way or another. Our prayer should be that we will not let ourselves be led too far down that path, that God will deliver us before it's too late. When you hear that word, temptation, what is it that comes to mind? Maybe something about food? or sex. I suppose either of those things could be within the realm of what Jesus meant, depending on the specifics, but they barely scratch the surface. After all, if the next part of the line is deliver us from evil, or sometimes deliver us from the evil one, that's a lot bigger than the choices that we make about our own apparent purity. The evil one doesn't care if you have another piece of that cake. <laughs> the evil one wants you to fear your neighbor instead of loving them. In some translations, instead of temptation, we might read, do not bring us to the time of trial, which makes it sound even more specific, like maybe we're talking about the end here. Do not bring us to that final test, God, 
or if you do, help us withstand it. Help us emerge victorious. This is, after all, a prayer about God's kingdom come on earth, and so we shouldn't be surprised when the language here gets kind of cosmic. And that's why when we pray it, we're praying something cosmic too. In the words of the theologian N.T. Wright, it's the prayer that the forces of destruction, of dehumanization, of anti-creation, of anti-redemption may be bound and gagged, and that God's good world may escape from being sucked down into their morass. Deliver us, God. Deliver us all together from evil. In their own book on the Lord's Prayer, Will Willimon and Stanley Hauerwas note that the language in this line, language like save, trial, deliver, are all words of crisis. And I wonder if that, if that makes them particularly timely words to pray now as we face this global crisis. But probably not in the end times, but it sure does feel like it sometimes. Is coronavirus the kind of evil that we pray for God to deliver us from? I think we can and we should. Obviously, at the same time that we wash our hands and socially distance to the best of our abilities. I also think there's a good reminder here that while anything that threatens the abundant life that God wants for us here on earth as it is in heaven is evil, Sickness probably isn't the worst evil. As Jesus says later in Matthew, don't be afraid of those who kill the body, but can't kill the soul. And believe me, I say this as someone who tends toward anxiety in the best of times. And the news these days scares me. I have no problem calling this virus evil. The worst evil is that everyday evil that tempts us as it threatens to kill our soul. Our fear and our hatred of each other, our playing life as a zero-sum game where your gain is my loss, our inclination to make ourselves safe at any cost. That's the temptation Jesus faces in the Garden of Gethsemane as the Sunday's, Sunday hosannas fade and the tide of the week begins to turn. As we enter this week, from Sunday to Friday and Sunday again, as we enter this next week of distancing and isolation and, and news that keeps us up at night, Maybe you'll find the words of this prayer that Jesus taught ringing especially true to you. Give us what we need each day. Forgive us for the ways we fail you and each other. Deliver us from evil, especially the evil that finds its way inside of us. And may your kingdom come, God. May your kingdom come. Amen.